Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. I'm Brink, and you're listening to The Voice of Insanity, bringing you an opinion about a game. Today we're going to be talking about Mayan Death Robots. This is an artillery game, kind of a successor to Worms, Armageddon, that feel of a game. If you're interested in seeing everything that this has to offer, stick with me through the entirety of this video. And if you're only interested in the summary and my conclusion on whether or not this is the game for you, hit the link in the top right corner. It'll take you to the end of the video to that kind content. Otherwise, stick with me, we'll go through it. First off, I've got to do a little bit of adventuring in the options menu because I'm not entirely fond of how this is set up. There is zero mouse control in this game, which I guess is not detrimental, but I have a mouse and scrolling through menus with the keyboard and space to accept and shift to back pedal. It's a little weird and it takes some getting used to because... Yeah, this isn't a console. Please let me use my mouse. Please, oh please. Let's go ahead and jump into a single player game. There is a versus mode for you and one other person, which right off the bat is a difference between this and Worms. It's not going to let you play with very many people. Um, it's got campaign. It's got quick match, which you can use just to set up a quick little battle on one of the maps with an opponent. And then random matchup, which randomly selects a campaign scenario uh, to stick you in versus an AI opponent or a human opponent if you go in versus mode. Uh, interesting point of fact, you can actually use two controllers on the same PC to control these characters, which is kind of nice. Let's go ahead and jump in solo. We'll see what this has to offer. We're going to jump into campaign. Um, actually, I do not want flash freeze. Because that is an incredibly annoying one that I have not beaten yet. Let's just back up one. We're going to play one of these and run with... Let's do... Uh, let's do that map. That looks like fun. Okay, so you've got several characters to choose from. You can see I've unlocked two of them, but not all of them. Uh, each character has a different pair of projectiles. You get two attacks per character, and they do a variety of different things. Um, this guy, Chalk, he is the god of rain and lightning. This is playing up on the Mayan theme, but kind of with a reality show with death-battling robots, which is very strange, admittedly, but it's, it is kind of cool. Um, he can throw a projectile which attracts lightning either in a diagonal pattern or straight up and down. So you can pick between those two. You've got a monkey god that lobs explosive rocks and bananas. You've got a drill that can either go in an upwards or a straight path. So you've got a few different things to choose from. I don't think any of them are particularly stronger or weaker than others, but some of them can be kind of useful in certain situations. I'm going to go ahead and go with the monkey because he's kind of hilarious and everybody wants to be a flaming monkey every once in a while. So this game, as opposed to Worms, I'm going to make a lot of comparisons to Worms because you know what? It's an artillery game and Worms is the one that I've played that I pretty much base all of my opinions off of. Um, it is different in that you have one character that you can control and you win by destroying your opponent's core. That would be the flashy box up in the corner. My boulder is an arcing projectile, which is going to explode and split. Of course, you can adjust both the strength and the angle of your trajectory in or ooh, yeah, just shot down the conquistador. Um, you can adjust both the strength and the angle of your trajectory. Now, you do have a third option, which you just saw the AI use. You can build. That would be option four, and it literally gives you Tetris blocks, which you can place within a certain radius of your uh, character so that you can rebuild protection around your core if your opponent gets too close. Then you've also got the jump ability, which lets you move pretty much wherever you very well please. You'll notice that there's some natives around the map. Those guys are allied with the god on their side. So if I venture too close, try to take up an extremely offensive position, those natives will actually come and attack me and potentially kill me, which is kind of a cool mechanic, but it also does limit your options when you're trying to move about the map. It's 
on one hand, it's an interesting mechanic, but on the other hand, one of the things that made makes worms cool is the fact that you can teleport from one end of the map to the other without any possible negative implications other than, hey, you might die because you got close to something dangerous. You can kill your opponent, and he can kill me. As you notice, I've got 75 health. But uh, you do respawn after one turn. So basically, the worst that can happen is that you lose a turn. Your opponent gains a little bit of an advantage. You respawn. You get to place your guy. Everybody's hunky-dory, and you can carry on with your lives. That pretty much sums up all of the mechanics on this game. I'm trying to think if there's anything that I've missed. Yes, there is. If you score a direct kill, there it is right there. That does pop up. I'm, I'm not entirely sure if it's random at certain points or I do know that it pops up when um, when you do score a kill on the enemy bot. You get a powered up shot for one turn. But other than that one turn, you have your two weapons only. That is one of the things that I do kind of have against this game. There's a couple of things that I don't particularly like. One of them is the fact that... Uh, I'm stuck with only two guns, there's no grappling hooks, there's no uh, teleport, there's no... There, there's a bunch of things missing. One of the cool things about Worms was that you had like a couple of dozen weapons to pick from. And that was really cool. In this one you've got two that you start with and random draw on a third on a handful of turns that may or may not be what you need to address that situation. So it just... I don't know. It seems to be a little lacking in that department to me. The other thing that I am not particularly fond of is the fact that you only have two characters. I know why they did two characters. I really, really do. Because you only have a set amount of time to set up your turn. You'll notice that little uh, flashing reticule at the top. That is the timer for both of you taking your turn at the same time. There is no turn base, there is no waiting on the other player to complete their actions, you both jump in at the same time. Which on one hand makes the game move way faster, and on the other hand kind of reduces some of the uh, extravagant plans that you could lay out in Worms, because it does kind of crunch your time. Um, there you go. I lost. Woohoo. We can sit back here at the menu. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I wanted to go over with this. I think that was about it. Yes. So I guess that brings us to our summary and conclusion. If you want a game that has the artillery play style and you want to have the option of playing it by yourself versus a very competent AI opponent with some campaign mess thrown in where you know you have sometimes the natives are flying around in helicopters, sometimes you have conquistador ships attacking you, sometimes you have a variety of things happening such as the flash freeze level where your hero freezes solid if he stays in one spot for too long. Um, there is some variety to be had there, and I have burned several hours on this game. So it is an interesting one to play. However, it does lack some of the tools and variety that other artillery games in the past have had. You're limited to two weapons for each hero. You can swap up your heroes to get a little bit of variety there, but you only have two and your higher tier weapons, the triple missiles, that kind of thing, you don't have ready access to them to decide when you need them. You're handed them at random only when you kill the opposing player. Um, or I think there's a couple of things on the map that trigger it. I'm not entirely sure on that one because I couldn't figure out the patterns some of the time. Anyway, there are pros and cons to this game just like any other game and on a whole I feel like it is a pretty fun play. I still haven't finished the campaign on it, and I have had a good time playing it. Sunk a couple of hours into it so far. So I don't think you'll have any regrets picking it up if you do like artillery games. But if you're looking for a game that you'll be able to play with several friends, something that's going to give you some really hilarious thought-out scenarios with interesting weapons, this is not going to be it. It is one or two players. It's pretty much something that you can uh, have quite a bit of fun with on your own, but maybe not so much uh, a party game or anything like that.
Alrighty guys, that is my opinion and I'm sticking to it. If you've played this game or if you're looking at the footage and you think I'm crazy uh, and you have a different opinion than mine, go ahead and hit up the comment section. I love to hear from you guys and I will see you in the next one. As always, thank you so much for watching.